Hey everyone, welcome back. We got a simple Gauss helmets video for you today. Once again, there isn't too much special stuff going on, but I had a few people ask if I could make a Gauss helmet, and what would I pick? This particular helmet choice, I would actually credit to Liam XP. He's a fellow streamer from Twitch who covers a variety of Warframe content and has extensive knowledge on weapon and frame mechanics. Feel free to check him out at the link below. He's also part of the creator program, so who knows? Maybe there will be drops sometimes. I'm also on Twitch myself, so if you want to see how I come up with these kinds of builds live, or just want to talk, catch me there. We just got our emotes approved, and we also now have our very own Discord server as well. Anyways, back to this Gauss. Gauss is one of those frames where normally I wouldn't bother to put a helmet on him because he actually has a complete kit. Each of his abilities is useful and interacts well with the rest of his loadout. Honestly, some people might crucify me for even suggesting putting a helmet on him, but this is what a few of you asked for, so I'm just delivering the goods. We're going for silence today. Why? Simple. It's ability synergy. His one lets you move around extremely quickly, and can even knock down enemies. If you can squeeze it on, his mock rush augment might add even more utility for this setup. But this most important part is how it works with silence. Silence stuns enemies for 2 seconds when they enter your radial aura. It's invisible, so you need to just kind of get a feel for it. During this window, they are blind and cannot hit you. They're also susceptible to stealth damage. This is also an animation stun, meaning it is affected by slows, but more on that later. If silence wears off, the enemies are now free to shoot you and no longer take stealth damage. The solution? Just mock rush out and back in. Exiting and re-entering enemies into the silence radius will stun them again for the full 2 seconds duration so long as the previous stun has ended. Ended. This means every time you dash, you should be able to exit enemies from the radius and stun a new group, or dash back again to stun the old group. By doing this, you can repeatedly CC enemies and prevent them from hitting you, purely out of the speed and area denial of Gauss's mock rush. The consistent stun and rapid approach makes this playstyle perfect for a hack and slash melee playstyle. However, you will want range on the melee to make the most out of the short stun period. Sorry, did I say short stun period? Well, we can actually slow that down with our primer. The perfect tool for this is Epitaph. It not only works as a decent viral and condition overload primer, but also force procs cold, which you can easily stack up to 10 with a few shots. This significantly slows down the stun animation from silence to 4 seconds or more, giving you ample time to hack away at enemies. The radial of Epitaph is also perfect for the radial of silence, letting you maximize the amount of stun on a large group of enemies at once. This is the Epitaph build I'm using. It's my generic viral radiation primer, 2 auger mods for the energy to shield conversion set bonus. We don't mod any pure fire rate because Gauss's red line will give us that. Lethal Torrents is more than enough. If you add anemic agility, the fire rate with red line will get so fast that tap firing can still accidentally shoot the full charged shot. Radiation is therefore if enemies somehow survive, they'll be shooting each other instead of you. With 2.8 multi shot and guaranteed cold per hit, enemies should be proc with 8 stacks of cold after 3 quick shots. Reflex Draw lets you pull it out much faster, but honestly this isn't that important and we're mostly going to be using it with our melee anyways which has an instant swap. Secondary Dexterity on the other hand acts as a 7.5 second combo duration stat stick for your melee. My melee today? It can be anything. Take your favorite one of choice. For me, I'm bringing Orthos Prime. It's been a while since I've taken this one out, but this is my comfort weapon and a generic cookie cutter pure slash melee build. The sticking point here is Berserker Fury, or Primed Fury. With how fast I'm moving around and this build not focused on endurance but just basic steel path, getting kills honestly should not be that difficult at all. So we will be able to keep Berserker Fury's effect up easily and can take full advantage of its 70% attack speed bonus. If you feel this is still an issue for you, of course you can always take Prime Fury instead. Generally, it's just a question of KPS. If you can feel you can easily always get kills, Berserker Fury is an option. Berserker Fury heavily favors KPS-oriented modes, such as survival. Prime Fury, on the other hand, is when you don't feel you can guarantee KPS, or game modes more focused around setup and maximal. DPS, such as disruption, which can have large windows of downtime between engagement, and especially when fighting the demolists. But for the rest of the build, well, condition overload because we're using Epitaph as a primer. You're basically guaranteed to get at least 4 status effects after shooting and few times here and there into the crowd to maximize the raw firepower that fuels into the slash dots more. This means you'll be getting at least 320% base damage at all times. There are the slots taken up by Prime Smite because it double dips for 2 times effect on dots, resulting in 2.4 times more bleed damage and gladiator might for boosted crit damage and a little bit of extra scaling crit chance since we're offloading viral to our epitaph primer. 
Alternatively, you can slot Spring Loaded Blade instead of Gladiator Might. This is actually a really strong recommendation because it will synergize well with the limited window of time to hit enemies under the effects of silence when you mock rush. In fact, let's do exactly that. You're also going to benefit from stealth damage multipliers when they're stunned, so damage shouldn't be a problem. Weeping Wounds will push our status to 194.4% at max stacks, which is perfect for a melee weighted towards 70% slash. Expect 1.36 slash procs per hit on an enemy this way. Blood Rush is also self-explanatory and boosts Orthos Prime to 129.6% crit. If you slot Gladiator Might, this edges it up a little further to 156 for more oranges than yellows, but again, stealth multipliers from silence should be more than enough, so we're taking Spring Loaded Blade. Primed Reach is self-explanatory. For our pet today, it's just another generic Panzer build. I'm not going over this one much, except that Viral Quills gives AoE Viral procs, it can keep you alive if you screw up with Martyr, it has infinite lives because of Panzer Devolution, and it can dodge lethal hits occasionally with Tech Assault. The rest of the kit is pure support. Fat Radar, Vacuum, Link mods that are only really relevant for base steel path, Synth Set which lets you holster reload your primer in the setup while meleeing, which would be fairly useful if you were using Nucor or some other normal magazine weapon, but we're using Epitaph. So how about we look at how Gauss complements these builds? None of our kit really needs strength, except the damage reduction scaling of kinetic plating. Going under 100% reduces the maximal damage reduction you can get, which prevents you from attaining 100% DR against IPS, Heat, Cold, and Blast. Going above 100 only increases the starting floor of damage reduction at low battery and doesn't affect anything at 100% battery or additional elements. For that reason, we're leaving strength at neutral. We do not need Prime Sure Footed because his 2 gives it innately. We don't need much efficiency since most of the builds are duration-based casts and we're also slotting Arcade Energized to to make up for any energy we lost during said cast. We also have Sky High, Duration. Redline scales with Duration, and we want to minimize the amount of time spent casting it. Although Redline always has a ratio of 66% max value time and 33% required minimum time to reach max battery, no matter what, as growth scales inversely Duration, this also has the effect of making Silence only needing to be cast once in a blue moon. Minimizing cast time improves the player experience and fight flow interrupts that could end badly. Your 4 now lasts a total of 83.4 seconds on this build as well as silence. Your 2 also shares the same sky high 83.4 second duration meaning it's super easy to manage your ability rotations. Because we went all in on duration if you choose to channel your 1 it actually only drains 4.5 energy per second on this build letting you travel quite far for good mileage. We have selected 79% range because we don't want to stun enemies too far away from us that we can't kill them with your melee before the 2 second second stun ends. Silence only has a 15.8 meter radius with 79% range. This is perfect for melee, which was built to only have 6 meter range. I mentioned Spring Loaded Blade would be a good option because this closes the distance between attack range and the radius limit at where stuns begin by a lot. Maximize the amount of time you have to spend attacking while they are still stunned out to 8 meters while also being able to hit more enemies. This leaves us with a ton of open slots on the build, which I've chosen to pile on Gladiator mods for. They have minimal effects on survivability, but the real reason I slotted them is for the set bonus. Look, we have a 3 set bonus for the Gladiator set now, meaning nearly a second Blood Rush. So that Orthos Prime I mentioned earlier, which reaches 129.6% crit chance with Blood Rush, it actually reaches 208.8 with 3 Glad set mods, which is just enough to guarantee you only see orange crits at 12x combo. This is another really cool synergy that Silence allows on Gauss because it makes the range stat which was so important for Thermal Sunder no longer important and now you can actually go negative on it. Therefore, we end up with tons of empty slots, and duration is already high enough, giving us the option to build for more weapon utility instead, and the only stat that Gauss's kit cannot offer, crit chance. Rolling Guard is to get pesky status effects off you. Arcane Strike to attack even faster with your melee, even if Redline isn't up. Vigilante Pursuit because we have another free slot since we don't eat Prime Sure Footed. You can use this to see where enemy density is highest and target them down to maintain high KPS. Ah uh, yes, Gauss's battery mechanic. So basically his battery level affects each of his abilities in a different way. Spamming his 1 is the fastest way to get your battery up, activate Redline, and build that up even further. His 1 doesn't really gain much benefit as battery scales up, but during Redline, it costs half energy to use, and having his 2 active makes your 1 have a slash proc on the shockwave. Mock rushing into a thermal sunder area also adds heat or cold to your shockwave explosion, however we have subsumed thermal sunder off his build. You can hold down your 1 to rush continuously, though in non-open worlds this has limited use. Use it your own discretion. It also burns 12.5 energy a second at base and 4.5 on this build. Hitting enemies gives battery, and hitting obstacles causes the shockwave explosion. Your 2 is your bread and butter because it gives you prime sure footed when it's active. Even better, that gives you damage reduction to IPS, cold heat, and blast up to 100% at full charge. Kinetic plating also drains battery slowly when active and loses more when it absorbs damage. This also synergizes with silence by minimizing the amount of incoming firepower as you stun them. You also get innate damage taken to energy conversion while 
while this ability is active. Milling enemies restores a tiny bit of battery while your 2 is active, so you want to play extremely aggressive. This is perfect for the quick hit and run tactic of silence usage. Perhaps one of the best effects occurs when Redline is active. It gives 100% base melee damage bonus, but the kicker is 100% chance to stagger enemies on hit. Ever since Melee 3.0, the inherent stagger effect of all melees was removed save with some very few exceptions. This force stagger allows you to stay in the zone longer to finish off enemies even if silence stun proc has ended. Your 3, which we've already gone over, is your silence stun. We aren't using the augment because it only affects finisher attacks. This is a hit and run setup, therefore it only scales with duration and range. Your 4 is the crux of the build, as always. It boosts your fire rate, meaning you can shoot epitaph for the AoE primer faster, faster melee speed, reload speech, which doesn't really matter for the epitaph but could for other primers, holster speed buff, which may or may not matter if you're choosing to bring a primer as well. You also get homing projectiles around you, but generally I only treat this as a light CC. The high KPS and active playstyle will ensure your battery bar never drops below 80% when Redline deactivates. Normally you gain armor strip bonus with Thermal Sunder when Redline is active and above 80%. The damage from Thermal Sunder is also impressive when Redline maxes out for a full strip. So why did we subsume it off? Because casting Thermal Sunder interrupts your melee attacks. It also requires two casts to kill on Steel Path at minimum due to armor scaling, as the second cast will remove all the armor before damage is applied at 100% battery. Thermal Sunder is also a static area, so for more active playstyles where you want to play as a blender, the passive silence radius that follows you everywhere results in a much more fluid gameplay. And safe approach for enemies to be passively stunned whenever you close in on them without having to cast another ability. Also, the stealth multiplier on first hit and also melee not really needing armor strip to work anyways if you pick the right weapons. Really, the only time you have to stop killing is to cast Thermal Sunder, so this actually removes the only part of his kit that interferes with the melee playstyle and manages to match the pros that Thermal Sunder can offer in other ways. And there you go, the Helmet Gauss. Thanks again to Liam XP for the original idea. He is an awesome Twitch streamer. I passed the build by him to take a look and it meets what he thinks would be suitable for a Silence Gauss. If you want to see more of him, again, I've included him in the description as well as the pinned comment below. While Helmet Gauss isn't what everybody wants to use, remember that there are always those looking for other options that you might be able to squeeze on his kit without detracting from it. I feel Silence Gauss is the answer as it actually provides enough for the kit synergistically to replace Thermal Sunder without just being a slapstick buff such as Roar or Eclipse could be. It actually makes his rotation smoother and further improves your survivability regardless of DPS and heavily favors melee gameplay, which after all the gun focused stuff I've been releasing lately I'm sure some of you miss. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get new information out always as soon as possible like I'm done with covering the Sisters of Parvos and the Plague Star updates. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once more new war info drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.